Hi. In today's video, we're going to look at thinking. Our content objective, or basically what should I be able to do after completing this PowerPoint, is first we should be able to define cognition. Second, we should be able to, to describe the roles of categories, hierarchies, definitions, and prototypes in how we form our concepts. Let's take a look at these principles. This is Unit 7B in Myers for AP Psychology. We're going to be covering three or four pages from 298 to page 300. We're going to talk about thinking or cognition. This refers to processes that involve us knowing, understanding, remembering, and communicating ideas. Cognitive psychologists study thinking or cognition with great detail. They look at such they look at such concepts as the formation of concepts, how we make decisions, how we form judgments, and how our beliefs can bias our decision making process. What are concepts? Well, concepts are basically simplified mental groupings of similar objects, similar events, similar ideas, or even similar people. Here's an example. There's a variety, many varieties of chairs, but they all have a common or similar feature that helps define what the concept of chair is. Those things might be three or four legs, a seat, and a backrest. Those are the similar features that make up the concept of a chair, even though it might come in a lot of varieties and sizes. A chair has at least these similar features. For practice, take a minute and try to come up with several simplified concepts and their common features that are presented in my classroom. We might start with books. Can you think of some other ones? Let's write some of these down so we have some examples in class and then we can compare it to other people's. Category hierarchies. We tend to mentally organize our concepts into something called category hierarchies. Remember, this isn't a place in the brain. It's really a process that the brain goes through. Hierarchies are basically organizing our concepts from very general concepts to ever more specific concepts. You'll notice in this example we can go from animals, which is a very general concept, to slightly more specific concept, domesticated and wild. And if we look at domesticated animals, we might think of dogs or cats or, since it's Wisconsin, maybe cows. And then we could go to each one of those concepts, narrow it down even more specifically. For dogs, we could look at mixed breeds or purebred. And under mixed breeds, we could look at uh, black labs, border collies, etc. So our concepts are really organized from simple and general to ever more specific concepts. How do we develop our concepts? Basically, we form many of our concepts by definitions. These are examples of concepts that we try to learn in school. An example might be a triangle has three sides. But mostly we form concepts by mental images or best fit examples, which we would call prototypes. For example, if we were talking about birds, many people in this part of the world or this part of the country would vision a robin. That's kind of a prototype of bird, a best fit example. But a penguin is not. A penguin doesn't fit most of our uh, similar features that we think of when we think of birds. Maybe in some parts of the world, a penguin would be a prototype. 
we can also use mental images and definitions simultaneously. If we think about categories, once we mentally place an item into a hierarchy category, this affects our memory and perception of these objects or ideas later on. And as our memory decays a little bit, when we try to recall information, we have what's called a prototype shift where we actually may misremember more towards a prototype of a category. A real uh, well-known example is in a study when people were shown a series of computer-generated faces that actually blended races together. In this example on the left we have a fictitious face that is approximately 90 percent Caucasian male and about 10 percent Asian male. As we move to the right we become less Caucasian male and more Asian male. Subjects were shown um, one of these faces, either a 70% male Caucasian face or a 60% male Caucasian face. Later on, when asked to recall the face, the subject was shown this row of faces without the labels, so they didn't have 90-80-70% Caucasian or 90-80-70% Asian male. Most or many of the subjects actually misremembered the 60 or 70 percent Caucasian face as the 90 percent Caucasian face. So the 70 percent Caucasian face that was typically more Caucasian in blending than it was Asian later on was remembered more towards the prototype Caucasian face which would have been the 90 percent Caucasian face. In a similar study the same results were actually found with gender blending of the faces. So they might have gone from 90% male to 80% male, 70% male, 60% male, 50% male, 60% female, 70% female, and so on. People misremembered more towards the prototype later on. So if it was a 70 or 60% female face, several weeks later they remembered that face as probably an 80 or 90% female and vice versa. So let's practice. We have a couple practice questions here I'd like you to take a look at. Um, see if you can answer these. So a prototype is a a mental grouping of similar objects, events, or people. B step-by-step -step procedure for solving problems. C a best example of a particular category. Or D simple thinking strategy for solving problems efficiently. Practice question number two. This is a tough one. This is an analogy type question that you often see probably six or seven of these on an AP test. Prototype is to category as blank is to blank. Is the correct response rose is to flower B, couch is to bed, C, man is to woman, or D, rope is to weapon. In this type of question, you want to divide this up really into two parts. Prototype is to blank. So would prototype be to a rose, a couch, a man, or a rope? basically which one of those is specific. The second part of this question we want to look at category is to what? Flower, bed, woman, or weapon? Lastly, we want to refer back to our content objectives 21.9 or 29.1 excuse me and 29.2 Think of a practice question that you might bring to a group study session to ask your group members after studying, and we'll ask for some of these in class. Please write this down as I may check it for assignment. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to review this video several times if necessary. 
In the next video, we'll talk about thinking and problem-solving strategies.